show of hands, can I see how many full? Welcome and good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out in such a rainy day, rainy night. Um, would like to get started. CB3, full board for the month of May. Okay, first I have um, Public session is open now. We will have the first couple of speakers signed up to speak. I ask that you please come forward quickly as we can start promptly. Uh, first speaker is Michael Pasco. Pasco? Talking about opportunities in the tech world. Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Michael Pasco. I'm a resident of the East Village. I live up at 6th and A. And I'm a mobile and web designer for an agency downtown. And I've lived here for coming up on three years, and I've been attending CB3 meetings regularly for the last year. And what I've, what I've heard sitting here and noticed is a lot of talk about the growth of the tech industry in the city, which is now the second largest uh, tech industry in the world, with uh, 7,500 companies in tech employing over 100,000 people. And I've heard a lot of excitement and some concern about what the growth of the tech industry means for the city and for the neighborhood. Uh, the tech hub, proposed tech hub being one of those issues. I'm not affiliated with the tech hub in any way. I just know that that's something that gets talked about a lot. And living here and being in the tech industry, I am committed to making sure that the neighborhood has a voice in what that means for the tech industry growing here and has access to those opportunities. So I've printed out a list of some upcoming events for the month of May into June, um, which I'll put on the table up front, and I plan to do that regularly. Uh, somebody suggested putting together a website as well to highlight some of these opportunities that I really think would be beneficial for folks, especially newcomers um, who are looking for opportunities in the industry, uh, job opportunities to be aware of. Um, so this is something that I, I will be doing monthly. Uh, my information, my email address is also on the bottom of this list. And I would just love to be available as a resource and answer any questions uh, folks have about tech in the city. Uh, not really affiliated with any official organization. Uh, I just want to be helpful. So uh, please come to me if you have any questions. I'll place these on the table up front, and I'd be happy to help anybody. Thanks. Thank you. Next we have... Harry Bibbins from GVSHP. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Harry Bibbins with Greenwich Village Society for Historic Preservation. Thanks for the opportunity again to speak. I want to speak about two different subjects. The first is the uh, proposed tech hub and the EULA process that is continuing. And the second is the uh, special district that has been proposed for East Village. So regarding the first subject, uh, we were outraged that the City Planning Commission held the one public hearing regarding the Tech Hub, an incredibly consequential project, which I don't need to tell you about, after the months and months of deliberation that this board put into that process. The City Planning Commission, with no public uh, notification, put the item on the agenda on May 9th, and we had to scramble to even get people there. It was a sham process designed to keep the public out, and uh, we're hopeful that that will not be repeated, although with this administration, uh, that's hard to say. Nonetheless, uh, we're glad that in the process of the ULERP, uh, a mere one business day before the City Planning Commission uh, hastily put that item on the agenda, our borough president uh, confirmed Community Board 3 and the community's uh, concerns about development pressures and included in her recommendations support for zoning protections, and we were very grateful for that. 
and now it's basically in the hands of our council member. We're counting on Carlina Rivera to stand strong and to make sure that she adheres to CB3 and Gail's recommendations and make sure that the zoning or neighborhood protections are included in any Tech Hub approval process. I'll also draw your attention to Senator Glick's report, which uh, goes into detail. She came in person to testify at city planning as well, uh, as uh, Carlina came as well to uh, express extreme concern about the scheduling. Subject two, very briefly, the special district. It's been about almost a year since there was the well-attended public hearing last year. The committee, we testified in April. We were grateful that they considered the city council retail report, which verified and supports the use of special districts and formula retail zone. So we're very excited to see some progress on the special district hopefully next month and in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Eric Diaz. Hi guys. Hello, board members and pub members of the public. Uh, my name is Eric Diaz. There's a couple of announcements. One is the local side of festival that's happening this Sunday. It's the annual largest uh, event on the Lower East Side, uh, uh, beginning at 20 to 5 p.m. Most of you in here probably know about this festival anyway. Right? Um, it's a family cultural experience. If you've never been, I encourage you to go. It's from 12 to 5 p.m. And I'm just spreading the word out as a resident of the Lower East Side who's attended this event probably last 10 years. Um, and so, yeah, just get the word out. Uh, feel free to take a picture. I don't have too many posters of these. However, if you wanted to touch base with me afterwards, I could find a way to get you a poster to take home. Um, but yeah, the theme is called Bridging Resurgence from Sandy to Maria. It's connecting what Lower East Side and Lower East Side went through, through Hurricane Sandy to what has happened recently with Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. So it's, it's thematic and it's also just a great experience to go to. A lot of music, a lot of food, go check it out. Um, my main announcement is just introducing um, Vision Urbana Inc. to those who aren't familiar with some of the services that we offer. I am the executive director of this organization that's been now in the community since 1996. We provide immigration services, senior programming, and youth services, um, as well as health. Services. I have an announcement next Thursday. I have flyers in the back, uh, rather at the front of the school. Um, next Thursday, May 31st, we have a health event, Healthy Vision. Um, it's at 1.30 in the afternoon at 207 East Broadway. Um, the information is here. We always serve a, a, a great a lineup of activities for people that come and attend. They learn about how to keep their eyes healthy, um, and they also get a good meal and just good resources. Um, it's well attended mostly by older adults and, and adults that have time available. Um, and so there's some life-saving information every workshop. And every month is a different workshop. This month is on vision. We have flowers in the back in Spanish and in Cantonese. Feel free to spread the word on that. And then lastly, one final program we have is a digital literacy program, which is for specifically for older adults. And come check it out, the flyer is in the back. And I'll just leave with this fun little uh, update. I just found out today that our organization, our director, Judith Ortiz, um, through our immigration program, has been able to accommodate and, and help a family of six receive asylum approval after just one month of submitting for their uh, application, which is huge, right? That means a family of six gets to stay in, in, in this country. Um, again, yeah, it's definitely worth a round of applause. Um, just excited about the work we're doing, and so um, feel free to contact me with any information. I do have cards up here if anyone's interested in talking later. All right, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you, Clint, for not pulling me up. Thank you, Eric. Carlin Chen. Hi, I just have a short announcement. This concerns Ricky Leung. He was a colleague of ours here. Uh, friends, of, uh, friends of his have started a economy page to help his family during these hard times. So tomorrow I'll be emailing a hyperlink to each of you board members. Is that allowed? What? Please, can, can I do that? What? Hey, can uh, I send up each a hyperlink? I'm sorry, I can you can email I send up board, each, uh, members. board members a hyperlink? Uh, containing you know, for the GoFundMe page for you know fundraiser. Um, that's up to the board to decide. We have to okay. take a vote on that. Way? We can take a quick vote. Um, are, are, is uh, everyone? Or I would just make the policy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think, let me. It's a policy decision. It hasn't been invented, right? We. This is the first time we've never done that before. On what? Vet it. What? Vet it. Like review. Vet it. Vet it. Vet it. Vet it. Uh, okay, yeah, okay, no, 
Hey, let me, let me, I know we took a collection here, but you know, we, uh, we just ask that you get through your shift, social media, you know, for others that may have known them. Thank you. Yeah, this, uh, if, if you don't want to receive it, can you just well, email? Hand, yeah, there. just e email, email me and I'll just not, I'll let Carlin know that you don't want to be involved. Okay, I'll, I'll wait for okay. your email. I'll All wait right. for your email before Okay, that's I send what it we'll out. do. Okay, so if you're, if you're wanting to be a part of it or you're not wanting to be a part of it, either way, just email me and I'll let Carlin know, okay? Well, actually, the email is not asking you to donate personally because uh, I know we all, all took a collection up over here is for you to share out to your social media for all the people that may have known from the community. Thank you. Thank you, Carlin. Okay, next we have Paul Reyes from the 2020 Census. Um, he has five Thank you, Community Board 3. Um, first off, I'd like to acknowledge that we received your, your, your memo and we are moving forward. As you all are aware, the 2020 census is right around the corner, and what we're trying to do is capture about 330 million people in 140 million households throughout before, before 2020. With that being said, there's a lot up in the air uh, regarding like how it's going to be done and where we're going to do it. We recognize that there's obstacles, and with these obstacles, we're looking towards our partners to actually help us deliver the message of the 2020 census. We want to raise awareness about the opportunities that are com coming up with the employment with, with, to work for the Census Bureau, as well as responding to the census. Per your memo, 35% of, of the population that lives in Community District 3 is considered foreign born. So with that said, we're going to need our partners to help us deliver the message of the confidentiality and privacy of the census. We've already started working with the state of New York to ensure that everything is going to be running smoothly. We also have a special um, initiative with the city of with the city of New York. And uh, we're looking forward to actually partner with community-based organizations such as the community board moving forward for 2020. That's all I got. All right? Thank you, everyone. I don't know. Uh, yes. Questions? What was that? Hold on. I see a question. Uh, this is for board members only. Thank you. Megan? What's the status of the citizenship question? The citizenship question was delivered to uh, excuse me, delivered to Congress. So it's still with them and they're gonna decide the, if it's gonna be placed on the census form. May? May? Hello, I'm sorry, I had another question about um, employment and jobs. Um, yeah, I received many emails from all different kinds of sources about the jobs and more, most recently, um, a lot of emails about job openings, particularly in the upstate counties in uh, Nassau and Suffolk County. So, um, but we're all in New York City here, so I was wondering if um, there were going to be any other openings in New York City or whether or not they've been filled. Oh, of course. Uh, so basically, well, so I'm, of course, of course. So right, right now we're ramping up for the 2020 census. So with that being said, we still have to open up, we still have to open up offices throughout New, the state of New York. The state of New York is getting 21 offices and I believe uh, 13 of them are actually here in New York City. So, and, but before we get there, we need to ramp up. We need to start hiring people. And right now what we're doing is we do have a small team of partnership specialists, which is the job you're referring, uh, a small team of partnership specialists throughout the region. Currently it is New Jersey, New York, all of New England and Puerto Rico. Uh, what you're seeing right now is we're trying to fill gaps. We have two partnership specialists here in New York City that are reaching out and starting to do some uh, community-based organizations and reach out to, to do some of that networking. but. In the future, we're about to bring on, like, so you just saw the first wave, we're going to bring on additional partnership specialists. We're going to start promoting a lot of uh, other jobs coming up in June, and then a second wave of opportun employment opportunities to, uh, in beginning January. And also with that being said, when people often think of the Census Bureau, they often think of the enumerators. We're going to be looking for people to actually run the offices. So we're going to need IT managers, admin managers, and things of that nature. And we'll continue to push this information out through our networks. So again, please give us a hand. Yes, yes. Well, we will definitely update the board through Ms. Setzer, and uh, she'll deliver the information to y'all. Okay. Uh, I saw another hand, Jaje.
So we do identify relationships based on the type of relationship in the census form. So, and if you were to take a look at the 2018 intent census test form, you'll see that there's a list of different types of categories regarding the relationship with the household, the head household. And some of those are actually in there. So there's going to be a large wave of, or I should say a large wave of, plenty of resources available for us to identify how everybody's related to somebody in the household. on the boots, on the ground effort, actually say, uh, is actually going to be, it's a shorter period of time, you know, because that's where we're going out enumerating people, we're actually going back out and identifying the addresses that are out there. However, the partnership specialist positions that are available, the um, upcoming office positions that are going to be coming available, they're a little over a year, depending on when you actually accept it onto the, to the bureau. And something to consider is that these are actual federal jobs, so they take quite a bit of time for us to actually run through the process. You know, it, it's not... We're going to call you in two weeks. We just ran a cert. It's going to take weeks for us to get everything done, our background checks and things of that nature. But the length of time is dependent upon the job. So some jobs might last six weeks. Some jobs might last 17 months, depending on the job. Any other questions? Yes, May. I'm sorry, it's not a question. Um, and I, I, I just wanted to announce that this, there's this New York Town 2020 coalition that's having a full day meeting. On on June 19th, and I'm sorry, I don't have any flyers, and I just, I just know about it. Uh, but uh, if anybody is interested, I could forward the email to you. Um, you can go represent yourself or any community organization that you're part of. It is during the weekday, but it's full day, and um, it'll be interesting. So the June 19th event. It's actually our regional director, Jeff Baylor, is going to be there. And I believe we have a state representative or from the governor's office, Richard Toby, will be at the event. Um, I can't think of the venue. I'm sorry, it's not on the top of my head, but yeah. And then to let you know, again, there are different initiatives that are, there are different organizations that are reaching out to us to ensure their community is actually represented. The city of New York, the state of New York, the state of New York just passed a complete count commission. You know, the uh, city uh, has actually taken great initiative to ensure that 2020 is going to be accurate for the city. Um, I'll be hanging out in the back if anybody has any other questions. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Okay, so as I said before, welcome everyone. Um, we have some new members, full board members, and I'd like them to just stand when I announce your name. And if you are a seasoned member, that means that you've been on the board for more than a year, you can please mentor a new member. We have 11 wonderful new members. And um, so the first one is Anissa. Stefan, can you please stand? Anissa? Is she here? No? Okay. Olympia Kaza? Kazi? Daniel Dixon? Jaje Daniels? Joseph Kearns? Sandra Thomas Struthers? Jesse Beck? Victoria Berros, Berrios, Victoria, no, okay. Uh, Paul DiRenzo, DiRenzo, thank you, Paul. Michael Marino, Michael, thank you. And Antonio Martinez, Antonio. Welcome all. And if you are sitting alone, if you are a, a member of the board, uh, can you please mentor another person tonight? meeting, you remember what it was like to come to your first full board meeting and not really know what to do, how to vote, what to think with all this stuff going on. So if you're sitting by yourself and you would like someone to talk to you and tell you what's going on, please raise your hand if you're an available person that can help another member. Don't be shy. Okay, so... Lewis is sitting next to Sandra already. Thank you very much. Lisa's sitting next to um, Olympia. Olympia. And so that leaves Antonio. Would you like to sit next to someone? Come, come on down. Don't be shy. Come on down. 
Come on down. Okay, Jaja, are you okay with sitting alone? Okay, all right, good, 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 good. Anyone else? Are you okay? Well, you've kind of been, okay, you have Trevor, okay. Good. Don't have me sing Stand By Me. Come on, everyone. Okay, are you okay there? We're gonna help each other out here. Move over a little bit, please. Come closer. We have another full board member sitting alone here. Paul is sitting alone. Are you okay to sit by yourself, Paul? Okay. All right, so is everyone else okay? Okay, so now we're gonna move forward to our elected official reports. Mayor de Blasio, public advocate Letitia James. Is Adam here? I don't see him. Comptroller Scott Stringer's office. Gail Brewer's office. Nydia Velasquez's office. Just come on down, come forward. Hi everyone, Mike Stinson from Comptroller Scott Stringer's office. First off, I want to congratulate all the new board members. You are lucky to have been appointed to the best community board in Manhattan. You have, <laughs> put that on the record. I have, uh, I'm sorry for all the board members that have been bombarded with my emails about our town hall coming up. It'll, it's not gonna stop until it happens, so you'll get a few more to the new board members, you'll get the same. On June 5th, we're hosting a Lower East Side Town Hall with every other elected official down here. It's gonna be at Gouverneur Hospital, 6.30 to nine o'clock. I hope all of you can come. There's a phone number on the bottom if you wanna RSVP or if you wanna email your RSVP. If you know anyone that's interested that does not speak English, we are offering translation services in Spanish and Chinese. Uh, if they would like to come, please bring them. So again, thank you and I apologize to your inboxes now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Afraz. I'm from the Manhattan Borough President's Office. Uh, as Michael said, congrats to all the CB3 members. Uh, as some of you may know, this year our office received over 700 applications for 300 community board positions. So very much, uh, uh, you know, a big accomplishment to have been able to come here. And the BP looks forward to seeing all the work CB3 continues to do. Uh, just a heads up, there's going to be a reception for all new appointments and reappointments uh, for the community boards on June 19th. It's going to be at the Museum of Natural History uh, from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., Tuesday, June 19th. Uh, formal invitation will follow, but just to be sure you can have that um, on your calendar. Uh, just a couple other updates so regarding the L train shutdown. So as you all know, last month at the Borough Board meeting where all the community board chairs meet up, uh, the Borough President hosted a meeting with the MTA and DOT. Um, and kind of working off of that, we now have an L-Train task force that's going to be meeting this Thursday, uh, specifically with the community boards, their transportation chairs that are affected by the L-Train shutdown. Uh, so we're hoping to kind of work off concerns and issues that are raised there. Uh, as was mentioned earlier by Harry from GVSHP, we did provide a testimony at the hearing by CPC regarding the Tech Hub. Uh, and Gail, the borough president, she is in support of it. She did raise concerns um, and did advocate that the administration um, commit to actions that result in zoning protections on the avenues, including height limits along Broadway and University Place, as well as protections for properties located mid-block on surrounding streets. And that is something that she feels very strongly about. Uh, in terms of general updates, we have a, uh, an event coming up Tuesday, May 29th. It's the Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month event. It's going to be at 280 Broadway at Gibney Dance. So feel free to come check it out. Uh, info is going to be on our newsletter and online as well. Um, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Nydia Velasquez's office. Yeah. Carolyn Mahone, L Maloney. Sorry. Yu Lang Yu. Deborah Glick. Okay. Harvey Epstein. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Mauricio, and I work for Assembly Member Yuli New. Uh, I have a few updates, uh, but first of all, welcome to the new community board members. Looking forward to working with you. Uh, feel free to reach out to Yulene's office with any assistance or anything like that. Our reports are 
our CV reports are in the back and also some co copies up here on the table. So feel free to grab some. Um, this month is Asian American Heritage Month. Uh, Yulin uh, held two events, in the, two events to celebrate the contribution of Asian Americans to, in New York State. One in Albany today where we honored uh, New York State, New York City's firefighters and New York City's uh, police department uh, officers who are of Asian American descent. And we brought them up and we had a little ceremony for them. And we also had an in-district ceremony celebrating Asian Americans uh, in our city where we also honored Ricky Leong, um, a former CV3 Goals member who many of us here uh, knew uh, personally and his wife uh, Sam actually came out and, and accepted the award on, on Ricky's behalf and it was a great uh, nice ceremony that we had for him and for the other honorees. Uh, on transportation issues, uh, in response to some constituent concerns, we about the escalator at the East Broadway uh, F train station, uh, constituents have been telling us that the escalator has been consistently down. Uh, so we, and this is sort of an ongoing issue that's been happening for many years. Uh, and we, we spearheaded a letter to the MTA asking them to address uh, the issue. It's just this escalator keeps breaking down and it, it just has to be more reliable for transit for constituents here in the Lower East Side. Um, we also are working with State Senator Brad Hoyleman and Senator Hoyleman uh, has been leading on this issue with regards to roll calls. Uh, he, he introduced a bill in the Senate and we are the uh, co-sponsors that would uh, bring some more uh, protections to consumers around robocalls and sort of making sure that they're protected, especially our seniors. Uh, not sure if you guys have heard, but a lot of, uh, there's been recently a sort of a spike in robocalls to people that have been actually targeting a lot of Chinese uh, speaking folks. So we've been getting a lot of calls from constituents about that. Um, and I'm sure Senator Hoyland's, Senator Hoyland's office will speak about that a little bit more. Um, the last thing that I have is Clinton and Grand Street. Uh, we're continuing to work on this issue. Traffic at that intersection continues to be a big problem. We've been partnering with the community board and local advocates in the area. A lot of people have been have, have their hands on this issue. And I think you know the positive news out, out of all of this is that with everyone's work, everyone's collaboration, the uh, uh, commissioner from the Department of Transportation uh, agreed has agreed to come to the community board next month, and hopefully we can hash out some some solutions then. So I encourage you guys to keep an eye out on that next month. Thanks. That's all that I have. Any questions? Great, thanks. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Mike Schweinsberg, and I am very pleased to represent your new assembly member, Harvey Epstein. Um, so I'll start out by congratulating all the new members. Uh, for stepping up to represent your neighborhoods and your community and of course respect all existing members for your long and many years of service. Thank you kindly. Um, so Harvey would like you to know a number of things. He, in his first week in office, he signed on to his first piece of legislation as a co-sponsor, the DREAM Act. Um, which will help ease the cost of higher education for children of immigrants in New York. Um, he also signed on to legislation to amend the annual teacher and principal evaluation system to eliminate the mandatory use of state assessments. Um, he, this past week, Harvey stood on the floor to argue for passage of a package of bills uh, to strengthen protections for tenants and fight back against some of the dubious practices that bad actor landlords had been using, specifically um, offering a solution that puts a stop to preferential rent scams. Um, turning the page. Oh, apologies to any trees that may be damaged because we did it. We didn't do it double sided. I'm sorry that was a good. Uh, we will better utilize paper in the future. Um, Harvey's first ever press conference, I'm very proud to say, was in support of people with disabilities. Specifically, the, uh, he was railing against the uh, L-Train plan and it's the MTA's failure to include accessible entrances for people with disabilities. Uh, mothers with strollers, shoppers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, believing, believing it unconscionable 
that the MTA does not intend to comply with the ADA law. Um, he looks forward to your joining him um, in a special accompaniment training that he's doing with the new Sanctuary Coalition on Wednesday, July 27th. Um, it will, uh, uh, people taking the training will learn three important things. Um, how to provide a support structure uh, to uh, strengthen those caught up in that mess. Uh, to keep family members informed every step of the process should a family member be taken. And they're committed to holding legal officials accountable for providing accurate information, which I think we know they don't. Uh, the training will be held at the East End Temple, located at 245 East 17th Street. And there's a little typo in that part of the blurb. Uh, listing our phone number as 969, it's, not, it's 979, you'll find that out at the bottom. There's also contact information for various people in the office. And I look forward to seeing you all every single month. Thank you for all the work you do. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian Cavanaugh, Holman, Margaret Chin, and Carlina Rivera. Oh, and I'm sorry. And Kevin Jean, Jean Baptiste from the district's office. Hello, everyone. My name is Vina Scalarzamon. I'm from the office of Senator Brian Kavanaugh. Um, quickly, on the Albany front, we had a major victory today for gun violence prevention. Uh, Brian took his bill to the Judiciary Committee, and 19 members voted, except for three Republicans, to move the bill forward on the Republican Senate floor. So we're hoping that this will get finally done and, and passed. Um, thank you. <laughs> Still a long way to go, but a major, major, major victory today. Um, thank you to everyone who came out to our convention. We had over 250 constituents come speak with us about their concerns, their problems on housing, transportation, seniors' rights, a number of issues. So thank you so much for coming out. Uh, we're going to be having a report coming out soon about those and evaluations that we had during the convention and what we can do to move forward on some of those issues. Our office is also working on the L train. Uh, we had 16 elected officials from Manhattan and Brooklyn sign our letter, uh, forcing the MTA and urging them to really get on the ball with things because the shutdown is coming in 2019. So we wanna make sure that we're not waiting for the last minute, especially the effects here on the Lower East Side with our buses and the traffic and other quality of life conditions. Um, I won't speak to Grand Street and Clinton because my colleague Mauricio already did so, um, but we're definitely on top of that and we're glad that there have been some changes. Hopefully that will alleviate congestion, but we will continue to push forward for more changes. Uh, lastly, M22 and M9 and the ADA uh, accessibility on Delancey Street. We had met with MTA last week we are waiting for them to come back to us with some information uh, regarding what factors into decreasing service on the M22 and also why they have not increased service on the M9. So I hope to have some good news to report when I return. And as far as ADA accessibility, our, prede our predecessor, Senator Squadron, um, had led this effort. So we are picking it up and we are continuing with that and we're working with our other colleagues in the overlapping area to make sure that we get this done and that doesn't continue to just sit there and, and us not have a way for our uh, constituents to go up and down and safely. I think that's it. If anybody has any questions, yes. Did the M21 come up at all? For example, the fact that on weekends, typically there's only one running per hour? So um, the call that we had was a number of electeds. Um, each of us, based on, on the complaints that we've been receiving, uh, had spoken for that. Carly Rivera's office does have a list of funds that they're working on as well. If they're here, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Um, sorry, I couldn't see you. Um, they can talk more about the other lines, but each of the offices took on a particular line based on the complaints that we have been getting. Um, but thank you for that. That will be on the radar. Is there any other questions? Uh, great. So just lastly, we are teaming up with NILAG 
Um, we offer legal support. We're going to bring a mobile legal center coming to the Lower East Side. Please call our office for more information. Uh, our information can be found in the back. You can set up an appointment. They can give you free pro bono advice and even take on your case uh, if you need more assistance on housing, uh, debt collection, uh, civil rights matters, other issues that you have, they'll be happy to assist you. So you can get more information on that in our flyers in the back. Thank you. Thank you, Venus. Hi, how are you? Caroline? Hi, I'm Caroline from State Senator Brad Holman's office. And first, we'd like to congratulate the new CB members. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> And then I guess one of the benefits of going towards the end is you get to echo what everybody else said. So that's what I'll do. Um, we want to just um, plug Scott Stringer's Lower East Side Town Hall, which we're a co-sponsor. So everyone should attend that um, on uh, June 5th. Um, also, in our board report, which you can get in the back of the room, we've talked about the horrifying school shooting in Santa Fe, Texas. Um, and this just reminds us of the package of gun bills that Senator Hoyleman has been pushing. And as Senator Kavanaugh's representative, Venus, said earlier, um, ERPO, Extreme Risk Protection Orders, which empowers families and law enforcement to prevent gun tragedies by temporarily reducing access to guns for individuals uh, who are at an elevated risk of endangering themselves or others, um, passed the Judiciary Committee to is really good has a really long way to go, but, um, but that was really, really good. Um, as Mauricio said uh, from Eulene's office, um, we have a new bill to protect consumers from unwanted robocalls. Um, the bill would prohibit robocalling without consent and will require telephone companies to offer consumers free tools on both landlines and cell phones. Um, Another new bill um, would be to restore net neutrality. So we've teamed up with a California representative um, to restore the principles of net neutrality to our states, which if passed in both states would mean that there would be net neutrality for about one fifth of the uh, population of the United States, because we're really big states. So um, that's it, any questions? I think I just made the time. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm Kevin John Baptiste. I'm from Manhattan DA uh, Zy Vance Jr.'s office. I don't normally cover this area. I normally cover Midtown. And if you if you don't know, there's actually two community board meetings, CB1, going on at the same time. But I heard through the grapevines that CB3 was the better one, so I came to this <laughs> one. So, so I'm here. I just want to ensure that every we can at least provide some form of coverage while we're going through transitioning period. Again, I normally cover Midtown. Uh, we're looking for representatives to cover the rest of Manhattan South. But uh, we just rolled out a very big initiative just last week where Manhattan DA Cy Vance just announced that he is no longer prosecuting a certain small amount of possession of marijuana. And uh, it's, thank you. And it, the, the reason for that is uh, it's actually a six-month study that our office has done where we uh, analyzed and spoke to various counties across the nation where marijuana is actually illegal and to see the effect that it had on public safety. So uh, with, with that analysis and with uh, District Attorney Vance's position of uh, legalizing, supporting legalizing marijuana, he feels that it should not be prosecuted as a crime and give uh, folks that criminal record for possession of a small amount. Um, so there's been various uh, studies, reports on this. Uh, I have some press releases in the back if you want to read further into it. Prior to that, we had the most lenient sentence or recommendation of a sentence for possession of marijuana where we recommended uh, 90 days for in a drink in contemplation of dismissal where it's usually called the ACD. So it's stay out of trouble for three months. Uh, if it was a second time, it's, you, we would say stay out of trouble for six months, but now we're just flat out not prosecuting at all. So again, uh, I have press releases in the back if you have any questions. Are there any questions for me at the moment? Yes? Yeah, if, if DA Vance is refusing to 
prosecute, prosecute uh, minor marijuana possession laws. Isn't he in violation of the New York Penal Law Code and stuff? So, the district the laws on the New York, you know, New York City has no laws. We don't write the, the Right, so each district attorney has the discretion of prosecuting certain crimes. Um, our office, as well as the Brooklyn DA's office, has signed on to no longer prosecute. And if you have not, uh, the mayor has also released a statement where he's asking NYPD to no longer make the arrests for uh, marijuana, small possession of marijuana. So um, there's the other counties that feel different and will continue to still prosecute those, but they do have that discretion. Any other questions? Eric, and then so it's a, it's a certain amount, um, I think, not 100% sure, but I think it's like 25 grams or less, or like, so I'm not sure exactly. It's in the press release, though, if you can just read through that really quickly. Um, and there are still the exceptions to that, so if it's a public nuisance, they can still make an arrest for that. If that person is a threat to public safety, they can still make an arrest for that. Other cases, we just ask to give summonses rather than arrests. So <laughs> any, any? I don't know what two ounces. I read somewhere it was two ounces. I had one here and then that. John Davis was next, and then Paul. So, even though you can be told by the PD officers to search, you might have to pay and give them some special results for having a couple of cases. I still feel like there's not enough training amongst it, like, especially amongst the sex workers, and just like what is being done on educating them. Oh, he was asking the question of NYPD's uh, sex workers, how they enforce it, and if, if it's being... So just educating the NYPD about not profiling and not harassing people that are assumed to be doing sex work or assumed to have a syringe because that is illegal, but still police officers are harassing people on biases and assumptions. And it's not an education training, so I'm just curious of the internal work. So I can't speak on behalf of the NYPD because the district attorney office is different from our offices and we've actually done, we've done training for the entire office, uh, implicit bias training, where we've had Vera Institute do a study of our office and they found that we were prosecuting crimes, some crimes differently. Um, after doing that study, we gave the entire office implicit bias training and even now we have mandatory trainings every, every year. And we also have a new hotline for, um, for sex violence in the workplace. And we also have a sex crimes hotline as well. So the trainings, again, is, is something that we kind of have to work on internally, which we've started doing since, that, um, since we had Vera Institute come in and do that study. And again, if we can relate it back to like the marijuana um, um, policy, it's simply because enforcement was not equal in every community. So that goes to the same thing as far as um, sex workers or sex crimes. But again, we can only speak as far as how our office prosecutes, not how the arrests are made. Yes? Now that the city of New York is, is joining the rest of America and actually uh, looking at marijuana as it really is, which is just pretty much substance, uh, how are we going to deal with for example, California Oregon, and Washington have begun to uh, go back to the records and to uh, expunge records of people who have been arrested. And uh, I don't expect the answer at this point as we're early in this process, but yeah. I, I would hope that eventually all the people who lost in loans and all the things who got thrown out of housing, mm -hmm. we could address all those problems. It's, it's a question that's come every single time I've mentioned. And again, it's still not legal in New York State, so it's a little, we're a little bit behind as far as other states come. But when it is illegal in New York State, then we can start speaking about expungement, um, records that our office, unfortunately, has placed on folks, see if there's a way that we can retract that or seal it in any way, shape, or form. But again, we're still a little bit behind in the steps of legalizing it. 
does it have on public safety and is the system is the is the criminal justice system being applied fair to all people that's really what we looked at when it came down to our decision to no longer prosecute the health effects and other effects will come down as the mayor has announced he has a working group with folks to see um, you know the effects of that it would have on the public but as far as in a criminal justice sense um, it was not being applied equally, and we felt obligated to, yeah. to no longer prosecute as a result. Val? Yeah, uh, I just want to thank you for the of basically making bail last and let you know that we go to jail, get on your record, then have a hard time getting a job, etc. I guess one of the things in terms of education, I see the A2 is back up as whatever. One of the things I will always about K2 was one of the K2 youth telling me, uh, this battle, that's cold for me. So I, I kind of wonder how the education involved. You know, the other thing is that most of these drugs are very cyclical. So, you know, K2, two years ago, was, you know, popular drug, basically on 125th, I heard it by. So, you know, what in terms of education and more so regards to K2, we're still, it's still synthetic marijuana, it's not legal. Um, we still are prosecuting for that because it has very harmful effects. Uh, people have died as a result of K2. We have an entire campaign around it of the effects of K2 and, and our office, how we prosecute possession and selling of K2. Um, I can <laughs> definitely share that information with you, but our office is still very much against that. I guess my question would be, what is the outreach? Because I think the issue should be outreach where they sell it, because it's seen it's sold in stores. You know, it's not like you gotta go deep cover to buy it. Yeah, if, if, if anyone knows where they're selling K2, let us know. We can definitely look into it and investigate. If we knew, we would be there. But of, of where we don't know, we, we every event we try to go to, we hand out flyers on K2 so folks can know what it may look like and the harmful effects of it. So if you know of any location selling K2, Call 911 or you can either report it to our office as well. Uh, we can investigate it and, and actually you know, prosecute if there is K2 being sold in a particular location. Okay, we're gonna take one more question and then we're moving on. Herman? Not so much a question. Uh, it's smoke in the general. Mm -hmm. We are not people who's jumping up and down saying legalize marijuana. Mm -hmm. In my country, ganja. Uh, I, I'm very familiar with that for years and years, okay? The fact is, there's a health risk to smoke, whether it's marijuana, cigarette, or whatever it is. So while everybody's jumping about legalizing this stuff, what I would like to know, and everybody knows, is what is the health risk for smoking? handle of everything. Cigarette is legal, but you can't smoke it in, in somebody's house, you can't smoke it in public places, you can't smoke it in stuff like that. It's the health risk that people have to think about. Overly smoking, and I think that's the end of everything for what I'm concerned. And also, marijuana affects people differently. 
it doesn't, it's not a calming effect to everybody, it's not a health effect to everybody. Right. Okay? Uh, I've seen people jumping off the roof, smoking marijuana, jump off the roof on what on sixties, you know, people smoking and stuff like that. So it's not entirely something that I would support smoking in general. I don't smoke. Right. And I mean, we, we know the harmful effects of smoking. Um, smoking cigarettes, secondhand smoke has, can lead to cancer, like we all know that. But someone smoking a cigarette is not going to get criminalized and have a record for it. Um, smoking marijuana is, can be just as harmful as a cigarette and we don't feel that they should have a criminal record as a result of smoking marijuana. As far as the public health of it, uh, that's something that's in the works and going to be discussed for years to come. But uh, in relations to criminalizing and having misdemeanors on folks' records and violations, that we feel should end as of August 1st. This is August 1st, by the way, people. Community Board 3, Thank you guys you. are great. Uh, I look forward to meeting um, My name is Sheila Rodriguez, and I'm here on behalf of the Office of Councilwoman Carlina Rivera. Um, for those new members, welcome. Um, our office is always a resource to the community, whether it's a tenant-related um, matter, business, uh, garden matter. Um, we're always available um, to support the community. Um, so, um, as you know, the councilwoman is new in her role, so there's um, many first um, things that we've done. Um, the councilwoman hosted her first District 2 Fair, um, and thank you, Community Board um, 3. We had a table there. Um, we also have other agencies that, over 12 agencies that were present. We had a lot of constituents turn out. It was very successful. Um, we also had, um, the councilwoman also had her first press rally at the steps of City Hall. Um, Carlina joined NYCHA residents of, of Jacob Reese Houses who had reported um, retaliation from um, property management um, after they went public with um, some of the repair concerns that they had in, in their apartments. Um, Carlina also um, introduced legislation to modernize um, NYPD Special Victims Unit case management system. Um, Carlina's bill, intro 781, would require the New York City Police Department to implement and utilize a modern case management system that would decrease the amount of time officers spent on administrative procedures and allow them to spend time, their time more effectively on solving each case. Um, also this month, Carlina submits testimony to CPC um, on the Tech Hub Euler. Um, Carlina joined neighbors and advocates in submitting testimony at the May 9th City Planning Commission hearing detailing her position on the Uniform Land Use Review Procedure, the Euler for the proposed Tech Hub at 14th Street and Irving Place. Carlina's testimony at the hearing brought attention to the long-standing issues where um, as you know, she continues to reiterate her goal of obtaining a tech hub facility that truly represents the education and economic development needs of her constituents, while also obtaining zoning protections for the adjoining neighborhoods that preserve affordability and character. Um, last week, uh, last and not least, um, Carlina um, remembers and honors local hero Ricky Long, sorry, Leong, um, at the 40th anniversary. Carlina presented a city proclamation to the family of her late friend and colleague, Ricky Leong. Ricky was a talented architect, a member of Community Board 3, president of the Cherry Street Tenants Association, and a board member of multiple housing advocacy organizations. Carlina um, delivered this proclamation that was also signed by the speaker, Council Speaker Corey Johnson and Councilwoman Margaret Chen and to his wife, um, Samantha. Um, copies of these reports are available in the front um, and as always, we are always available 
for the members, for the community residents at large. Yes. Yes. Can you perhaps speak to how uh, Carlina is uh, suggesting that the case management system for the Special Victims Division be made more efficient? And what are the exact changes she's suggesting be implemented? So I am not fully versed on the legislative question, um, but I'm more than happy to have Jeremy Unger, who's her legislative director, um, come back, uh, get back to you on your question. I'm not sure if it was. It's, it's, it's not really legislative, is it because you're asking them to change their case management system as departmental. So there isn't really any legislation to implement to cause or affect change in what is a departmental management so, yeah, so I was just wondering what the specific So the bill is was introduced, it hasn't been um, heard, and I think that I, I can speak to that we're meeting with NYPD to discuss their the system that they currently use and to see how um, what changes can come about and what other system there they would be able to implement. Any other questions? Yeah. Hi, so um, I completed this past year, I worked with, through AmeriCorps, I worked with a nonprofit called Green City Force, where we provide a lot of nutrition information and fresh produce to people in NYCHA across the city. And I was designated because I lived in this area to the Jacob Reese housing. Um, I will follow up with people in your um, office, but just thinking about how um, people in NYCHA don't have access to fresh food, and also how Green City Forest wants to build a garden, or no, a little farm, to be able to provide for people, as they already do in six farms across NYCHA developments. And I also saw that while I was doing smoke-free outreach, that I got trained for the Department of Health, there still is a, um, I don't know, a lot of the elevators are not uh, safe for residents, and just something that they should look into. And that's just the point, again, I'll follow up with you about that. Just want to keep that in your head. And something I did reach out to Carlina about is, it's interesting how this district, as well as Carlina's district, as well as Jin's district, is both community, is two districts that have a huge low income population, but also gentrification is coming in, and how to balance the both. And with this whole new tech change, I'm just curious, you don't have to have the answer, but Carlina thinking of ways to provide economic opportunities for low-income people, so it doesn't become another tech center that the community gets pushed out because of gentrification, because that's what I'm worried about. I feel like this tech change is going to bring gentrification, and already many people who lived here for decades, especially in Rhode Island, you know, are being pushed out because of these opportunities. So just thinking of ways how to make it economically equitable for people of all incomes who've been there for a long time. So. Yeah, so I, I think that um, that conversation has always taken place, and I think that in terms of the economic development component, I think CB3 has done a lot of, the community board members have done a lot of advocacy and a lot of work behind what they would like to see in terms of job development opportunities and educational opportunities for the community. Um, again, um, yeah, that, is, that has always been something that Carlina has been firm, that she supports both to happen hand in hand. Um, and so again, my name is Sheila. I'm Director of Constituent Services. I wear many hats in the office. So if I don't have the answer, I will get someone to get you the answer. So thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna move on now to our roll call and approval of the minutes for March. Listen for your name. Yeah, so new members? Yeah. Yeah. Since you're, since you're new members, uh, there, are, there are three votes, the options to vote tonight for the minutes of last month. You can vote yes, and then you're saying that you agree that that was what happened and what was passed or whatever. You can vote no, or you could abstain because you weren't here. Um, and the way we count votes is um, yeses must outnumber noes plus abstentions. So 
there's a, a small possibility that abstentions might exceed yeses tonight if everyone were to abstain. So what I'll say is let's hold the vote up until the very end. We can count it. And if it hasn't passed, maybe I'll drop a hint that someone might want to switch their vote to a yes so that we can pass the minutes. But anyway, is that clear? You can vote yes, no, or abstain. There's no such thing as a present not voting on the minutes because there's no possibility of a conflict of interest there. In the other votes, a conflict of interest, you all have training about that, I believe. If you haven't had a training yet, if there's any possibility of the items on our agenda would bring you a financial advantage or an advantage to your employer, if that's a city agency, then you must vote present not voting and you must state the reason. Like I might say, I'm visiting present not voting on, you know, SLA item five because the nonprofit I work for is an investor in that bar. That's not true, but that would be the kind of thing that I should say. Lewis. Lewis. Typically, I have seen when I'm in that situation. Yeah. All I'm saying is that we've got a small meeting with a lot of new members. Yeah. If the abstentions outnumber the yeses, then we did not pass our minutes. And when I am encountering that situation on my committees, I'm more than happy to vote yes, even though I wasn't there. Okay, now we're going to have the roll call vote. Listen to your name. Okay. David Adams. Jerome Altman? Same. Jeff Beck? Yes. Dominic Berg? Yes. Lee Berman? Yes. Victoria Barrios? Victoria? Karen Black? Yes. Lisa? Yes. Carly Chan? Yes. Jonathan Chu? Yes. Mifong Chan? David Crane? Yes. Judge A. Daniels? Paul Dorenzo? Yes. Eric Diaz? Yes. Daniel Dixon? Yes. Dean Johnson? Yes. Alastair Konamakis? Yes. Shirley Fennessy? Yes. David Ford? Yes. Ryan Gillum? Deborah Glass? Yes. Herman Ewan? Yes. Trevor Holland? Yes. Linda Jones? Yes. Valentina Jones? Yes. Marnie Ann Joyce? Marnie? Megan Joy? Yes. Lisa Kaplan? Yes. Olympia Kazi? Joseph Kern? Yes. May Lee? Yes. Alicia Lewis Coleman? Yes. Lewis Lopez? Yes. Michael Marino? Yes. Jeremy Markman? Yes. Antonio Martinez? Yes. Antonio? Yes. Alexander Militano? Nancy Ortiz? Carolyn Rathman? Yes. Damaris Reyes? Richard Ropiak? Yes. Robin Chattel? Robin? Larissa Scheinberg? Yes. Clint Smeltzer? Yes. Anisha Steven? Sandra Struther? Josephine Velez? Yes. Rodney Washington? Yes. Kay Webster? Yes.
So, welcome again to all our new members, and thank you for choosing CB3. <laughs> I hope you feel the same way at the end of your second year that you'll want to renew again. So, first things first. Many people, now that we have 11 new members, many of you, I told you at the last meeting that we would have the committee request forms. So you're choosing your committees that you wish to serve on. If you've been on a committee for over a year or two or more, and you feel like you need some revitalization and that particular committee may not be your choice. <laughs> I'm trying to be tactical right now. So if you choose to change your committee or you choose to join a committee for new members, for the 11 new members, I want you to take one of these forms, really look it over, make some comments. I'm going to look at these forms and based upon your choice and what I believe your levels of expertise may be and what the, that particular committee may need. I'll talk it over with the chairs of those committees and we will choose where you'd like to go, right? So it's your choice, you get three choices for the new members, right? But I also encourage you to please go to the committee meetings. Please go out and look at these committees. Now there are subcommittees as well but you must choose a committee in order to serve on a subcommittee. You can't just choose a subcommittee. Like there are, uh, I believe three and some task force right now, a few task force and some subcommittees. Um, you must have a main committee, okay? So like if you choose uh, waterfront, you have to choose parks, okay? If you choose health, uh, if you choose uh, arts and culture, Right now, it's in parks, so you have to choose parks. And then you can have arts and culture as well, okay? Um, but look, think about your schedule. I encourage you to think about what day that particular committee meets and choose, you know, and if you feel like you, you, you want to change it after you've said, ah, I don't think that's one for me, okay, that's fine. We can have a conversation about it. So I want you to please come and get one of these forms um, and this, and also for the uh, seasoned members as well. If you've been around for a while and you wish to change your committee, you're also welcome to do so at this time. Yeah, I want them back at the next meeting, at the next full board meeting, at the end of June, okay? There's going to be a lot happening at the end of June. Lots of exciting things. Um, tonight, for those members that didn't pick up, please come forward and pick up a bylaw. The bylaws committee is going to be sharing these revisions that were made on your bylaws. If you thought you knew the bylaw, you should look at these new revisions. Okay? They're not, it's not the same one that's on the website currently. This is a new one. So you're going to look on the back of it and you'll see that it was revised. Okay. Yes, please, everyone that is a full board member, please take a bylaw. Thank you. And then Lisa will come up and give further instruction about it. Okay? That's it for me, Susan. Um, hi, I also would like to welcome new members. Um, I'm Susan Stetcher, the district manager. Uh, and I look forward to um, meeting everybody and working with everyone. And uh, please feel free to give me a call in the office if you have questions, or um, even best is the emails. Easier, I always respond to emails right away. Um, I wanna suggest that all the new members take a good look on our website. We have lots of information on our website. Also, if you um, go on our website in the top right-hand corner, um, it says join the CB3 email list, so please go on there and sign up. There's a few questions about interest, 
but it'll also get you the monthly agendas, um, which are in addition to um, member emails. I also want to alert all the new members, there's a draft agenda, it's yellow. Um, this is only a draft. Do, uh, anything may change. The basic reason we have these draft agendas is for the committee chairs to make sure any previous changes they made have all been done correctly and it's perfect. Generally, the um, final agenda is posted and uh, sent out the day after the full board. So if you go on the website tomorrow, um, you will see the full agenda, the full final agenda. You will also get it by email. In addition, um, before going to a committee, you should look at the agendas on our website because we try and get as much as supporting material as possible for um, the agenda items then that'll come in constantly. We attach it electronically to the agenda items on the website. Um, so please look at that. Um, we had uh, announced an L train meeting for June. We had announced it earlier at various meetings. It has been canceled um, because they don't have their updates ready and the MTA will probably come to the board in September for that meeting. Um, there have been increased community complaints uh, regarding K2, which was mentioned earlier. Um, there was a major arrest for K2 dealing on Rivington Street. In July, K2 will become a Class A narcotic in New York City. Right now, dealing is an arrestable offense as a health code felony. Um, if in possession, a summons is issued. After July 12th, there will be a new classification which will improve charges against sellers. The intention is not to focus on users. Um, and precincts will do joint operations with homeless outreach and with parks. Um, this is a drug um, seemingly to be used mostly by very poor people. It's very inexpensive and we often see this um, around shelters and in parks. Um, uh, during um, something new I found out is that there is a code red um, when it's 90 degrees or up. This is regarding um, homeless people on the street. Um, we knew in the winter that people, when it's below freezing, people um, were actually forcibly removed if they seem to be in physical danger. And um, there are also um, cooling centers opened up when it gets over eight, uh, 90 degrees. And if you see an individual who looks like they may be in trouble, um, you should call uh, 311. Uh, we had, um, this past month, we had a visioning session for the transportation issues around the Essex crossing area. Um, it went very well, about 55 people attended. Um, the Lower East Side Partnership staff and CV3 members helped us with facilitators. There were uh, first a presentation, then there were seven breakout tables with about five to six member uh, participants plus two facilitators at each table. Um, a staff member from DOT also attended and was very helpful. Um, Laura from the bid and Vicente in the, our office are now capturing all the information from the maps and notes and we'll create a report for the Transportation Committee that will probably be ready in the next two weeks and then go to the Transportation Committee for a resolution. Um, two more things. For those who live in the Broome, Clinton uh, Streets area, there's going to be a major concrete court tonight at Site 4 that's surrounding the um, Broome, Clinton, Suffolk, and Delancey Streets starting at 10 tonight and um, continuing to the morning. And the last thing is we're starting our budget se uh, season. Uh, you'll notice district needs statement on every uh, committee. We will be voting on district needs in July and on budget priorities in October. For new members, under member resources, there's a section on CB3 participation in the budget process. And right under this section for everybody, there's a section of research tools. 
You can find last year's district needs, so you know what it's all about, is on the website um, under the district profile in the top left. And this will be discussed at every meeting, uh, committee meeting, so that um, people will be able to understand what's happening. And it's um, generally, go after you go through one season of the budget, it, ma it makes a big difference in understanding uh, how the community boards deal with this. And that's it, unless there's any questions. Any questions for Susan? Thank you. Okay, um, committee reports. So I'm just going to say just for uh, for Nancy, who's not here right now, Carl. Oh, for Susan. wasn't a board member available. I, I guess, actually, you know, I don't know if the board chair was going to be the person to go, but she, no, I haven't was assigned not available. Anyone. I haven't assigned anyone yet. Yeah, so I went for the board. Are you asking because you're interested in being a rep for the board? Is that what it is? Probably you would like it, though. I wouldn't mind being on that, yes. Because she, she has not picked any resident from Chinatown area. She has two reps from uh, nonprofits whose only class of interest is to get themselves funding. So it, yeah, it, it's totally exclusive to the residents, uh, uh, the people being impacted by this expansion of the MDC. Um, the, the mayor's office is um, having community engagement sessions they started yet. They were supposed to start in April. They have not started yet. And will be community stakeholders at those meetings. Uh, it's, a, it's a validated session. Um, thank you, Carly. Thank you. Um, so on June 10th, I believe it is the second Sunday in June, we will host our annual new members gathering. This is as per Nancy, who is the uh, new members gathering chairperson and planner. Um, the meeting, uh, the, the party will take place at 59 East 4th Street from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Please bring a dish. Please email Nancy what you desire to bring. If you cannot attend and you'd like to donate something towards the festivities, you're welcome to do so. Um, and that's it from, from Nancy. June 10th. June 10th, the second Sunday in June. Also, for the month of, I'm going to say this for the month of June, but I would like to maybe plan it now for the month of July, as new members just came on, and we want to give you a little time to sit in. But we were uh, invited to go to the Tenement Museum for the new display under one roof, which is taking uh, this new, dis um, I don't want to call it the display, but it's a new exhibit that they're having at the museum and they want to invite us to come on a Sunday or Saturday. And I will get, I just will email everyone out proposed dates. They gave us two specific times, early in the morning or at 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So it, it would be a great opportunity for those that would like to get to know one another a little better um, and be community. This is a really great opportunity to be community. Um, so that's it for me. Next, we'll have the, I'm sorry? New members meeting, uh, the new members gathering will be from June 10th from 3 to 5 p.m. I encourage board chairs to please and subcommittee chairs to please come to this gathering. It is a great opportunity for us to get to know each other and for the new members to understand a little more about your committees and your subcommittees. At, at, at the 59 East 4th Street. 
between Bowery and Second Avenue. And it says Community Board 3 on the door. <laughs> and it has a big New York City sign on the door. Okay. Next, we have the nominating committee. Megan Joy. You want to do both while you're up here? You want to do both while you're up here so you don't have to go sit down and come oh, back? Yeah. You want to do both? Oh, well, you didn't need right? No, you did. You did. Okay, yeah. Economic development, there's really nothing to report. We met about, uh, oh no, sorry, because we met after the full board meeting. So May's meeting, we um, met regarding some Chinatown uh, filming issues. Um, but nobody came to the meeting. There was no um, businesses that had any issues that came to the meeting, but if there are any filming issues, um, <coughs> Commissioner uh, Menon was there and she just kind of ran through how to complain in the future if there are complaints. One is to 311, one's to your local community board office and also to the Office of Media and Entertainment itself, and there is certain steps that they could do, like moratoriums or um, just adjusting their permits if that happens. We met in April after the full board meeting, and we heard um, a presentation from the City Council's report on how to preserve retail diversity, and there are certain steps. What's that? Is this the nominee? This is economic development. I'm doing both. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've got a wide <laughs> thing. Um, and so there's certain steps the Economic Development Committee wants to take going forward, um, you know, possibly uh, talk about a special district, um, meet with our electeds about that, um, also try to get some more funding for neighborhood organizations that support local businesses. And I think that's it for economic development. Um, I am the chair of the nominating committee and we have accepted nominations for, there are six um, officer positions. Uh, chair, sorry, chair, vice chair, second vice chair, secretary, assistant secretary, and treasurer. And we have accepted nominations for all six of these positions. Um, so nominations will remain open until the end of my speaking. So um, I'm going to, <laughs> unless for some reason somebody drops out of the race and then we can reopen it. Um, so what I'm gonna go through is just sort of how, how we do this. I'm gonna tell you who's been nominated. Um, Next month at the full board meeting, those who have been nominated will have the opportunity to get up and say a few words if they choose to. Um, and we will all vote on a piece of paper. We will count it that night of the meeting and the winners will be announced. Right now there's no contested um, elections. So uh, we have accepted nomination, uh, nominations for the Office of Chair uh, for Alicia Lewis Coleman. Um, is there anybody else that would like to be nominated for the position of chair or would like to nominate somebody for the position of chair? Okay, seeing none, I am closing the nominations for chair. First Vice Chair, uh, we've accepted the nomination of David Ford. Would anybody else like to run for first vice chair or nominate somebody to run for first vice chair? Who's that? Oh yeah, sorry, David. this is David, first vice chair. Everybody who is, has been nominated is actually in the position right now. So um, they have experience, which is good. Um, okay, seeing none, first vice chair is nominated are closed. Second vice chair is Nancy Ortiz, who is not here today. Um, anybody else want to nominate somebody for first or second vice chair? See none for closing nominations for second vice chair. Secretary, we've accepted 
Clint Smeltzer for uh, the position of secretary. Anyone else want to run for that? Going once, going twice. All right, nominations are closed. Assistant Secretary Eric Diaz, who is sitting there taking minutes all night. Um, anybody else want to usurp the throne of Assistant Secretary? <laughs> going once, going twice. All right, nominations are closed. Lastly, Treasurer, Mr. Herman Hewitt, raise your hand. Nomination still open for treasurer. Going once, going twice. Okay, nominations are closed for treasurer. Um, that's it. Everyone has the opportunity to vote, obviously, whether you're a new member or not. Um, am I missing anything, Richard? Oh, yeah, and new members, if you're interested in um, procedures or anything to do with the nominations, there's bylaws on the CB3 website, and there's a nominations um, section to that you can look up. Thanks, Dave. Thank you. Um, <laughs> nicely done. Our newly elected assemblyman, uh, Harvey Epstein, has just walked in the room. Would you like to say a few words? <laughs> Hi, everyone. How are you all? Thank you. Harvey's also a former chair of CB3. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. I spent 14, 15 years on CB3 um, until my daughter took over. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah. So. People know I was elected, I don't know if people know I was elected a month ago uh, to the assembly for this neighborhood. Just came back from Albany, wanted to come by and say hi. We had a, an important vote today to elect the first female attorney general from the state of New York, Barbara Underwood. Very exciting news. She'll be interim attorney general until the end of the year. And then we have an election in September and November to someone to have a full term after that. So really was a momentous decision today and really to be inspired to be, to be a part of it. Things that we've been working on, I think we have our first community report, so you can have that, and it's in the back if people want to make copies of that, or have copies. We were able to vote on strengthening the rent laws last week and able to stand up for rent stabilized tenants in New York City, but, and the assembly voted for a 10 bill package to strengthen the rent laws, which is really amazing. People know about the L train, the closing of the L train, and not only the problems with closing it, but also the, the during this time when they're closing it, they're not going to work on accessible people with disabilities. So we had a press conference last week to talk about it. It's actually, uh, we got a real favorable response from MTA about maybe they'd have conversations with us. So I think we've gotten some movement there. But the idea that we're closed stations are not making it accessible for people who live and work in our city is really unacceptable. We're doing a training, if you will see, uh, June 27th, an accompaniment training. Uh, for folks know that people who are facing deportation proceedings uh, have a serious problem. English may not be but the first language. We want to train as many New Yorkers to go to those hearings and to assist people who are just scared because they've lived in this city for most of their lives. These people could be born in this city and not say born in out of the country but come here when they're three years old and New York is the only home they know. Yeah. And they're at risk of deportation. So we want to make sure that we have people who can volunteer to get out there, help them, help them understand the system. It's been proven through the new sanctuary organization that it's been effective. We want people in this district to get involved. So I'd love people to come to our meeting at the end of the month. We'll be getting a newsletter in two weeks uh, to get more information about it. We'd love for you to have it. If you have questions for me, Mike, who people know from this neighborhood, is uh, working in my office. You can call my office right now, 250 Broadway. If people know a local office, we'd love to find one. Though we'd really love to have help finding a district office in the district. Right now we don't have one, so we're stuck all the way downtown at 250 Broadway. That's it. If you have questions, I'll take them. If not, I'll let you go on with your election. Is that what you're doing right now? No. What are you doing? Board report. Uh, board reports. Yeah, we just closed nominations. What, Alex? Oh, Alex is next. And she has a lot to say always, so. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you.
Okay, now we're going to go back to board reports. Uh, SLA and DCA licensing. Okay, there's a, an amendment to number six. Oh, yeah, okay. Do you want me to wait? Eric? Eric. <laughs> so there's an amendment to number six, which is an alteration application. Uh, for hours of operation, uh, we had thought that the hours of operation were 12 p.m. to 2 a.m. and 12 p.m. to 4 a. Uh, 3 a.m. We thought those were the existing hours, and they're actually 12 p.m. to 2 a.m., 12 p.m. to 4 a.m., so I fixed it, but I'm noting the uh, change since it's a change from the committee, and I would move that, that uh, since we voted the existing hours, that we uh, amend that motion to reflect that. And then there was one applicant who did not submit stipulations. Which is number three. In which case the title is going to be amended to a community board, can I use the pen? Community board recommendation, recommendation to deny. Um, And it's going to read um, to deny the application for a full on-premises liquor license for the Great Cabin LLC with a proposed business name of the cabin for the premises located at 205 East 4th Street between Avenue A and Avenue B because the applicant uh, did not agree uh, to make as conditions of its license the following signed notarized stipulations. Um, and then we could strike the last paragraph, which was the justification for the approval. But what we had done was approved hours of closing time as 2 a.m. and 3 a.m., thinking those were the existing hours. And in addition to the alteration to expand, they were seeking to extend their hours. But I checked the previous stipulations from 2013, um, and we were actually incorrect. Their existing hours are these hours. So I, I think we need to amend it to reflect the existing hours. Need to amend. So I'll move to amend. Yeah, yeah. amend. A bullet point two there. Under item six, now mm -hmm. we're discussing it. So there, this is not controversial. I, I, I moved it so we could just get on with discussion, right? This isn't a controversial thing, right? Because we always do that. What? We always do what? This is not a controversial thing, right? Because we no. typically do this, no, and if we just we made would, a mistake previously. Yes. So I would amend it to read as it's written on the vote sheet then. 12 p.m. till 4 a.m. on Thursdays. And Saturdays, I guess at committee they passed it as 12 to 3. Thursdays or Saturdays? Yeah. I understand. It's that one hour difference on the weekend, so it doesn't seem like there's a lot of discussion. Maybe you got to do a show of hands, though? Everything good? Okay. I'm just correcting this prayer. Go ahead. Okay. Eric has a question. Okay. We need to get that approved. There needs to be a vote on to whether to accept the amendment. We have to vote on whether to accept the amendment. We're voting to accept the amendment. So just show of hands. Show of hands, please. To accept the amendment and a change of hours. Please, everyone, pay attention. <laughs> I love you all. Pay attention. All right, thank you. Thank you. Any opposed? Any opposed? Nope. Okay. 
Abstention. One abstention. Two abstention. Three abstentions. Three abstentions. Oh, four. Thank you. Four abstentions. Thank you, Alex. Transportation, public se Question? Thank you. So for new members, so you understand the way we typically vote on the main motions that were in that committee and all of them is we, we basically roll each committee forward into a one monolithic vote at the end. I think they call this a calendar agenda, something like that. The, the point is that we don't have to do roll call vote after roll call vote. If you are against a particular item, remember that, mark it on, you know, mark it down or something. When you do vote in the end, you could say, you know, that was item number three that was just discussed. I could vote by saying yes on every item except SLA three, where I'm going to vote no. And that'll be recorded as such in the vote sheet. Um, it just makes for a more efficient process for us. Um, so, no, sir. And I also encourage everyone, as you are new members, if you are interested in a particular item that comes up in any committee, you can go to those committee meetings and listen and give your comments and think about it because that's where the work really gets done is at committee. I encourage each and every one of you to please go to the committee meetings and listen and give your input on whatever it is that the topic may be that you know, you, you feel very strongly about. Yes, Lisa. I should also mention that we could, if someone cares about an issue one more discussion on it, that it can be. Yes, absolutely. Shall I, or do you yes. want to? Go ahead. Okay, absolutely. If, so, if you wanted focused discussion on a particular item, all you have to do is, you know, get recognized by the chair and say, I would like us to have, uh, you know, to dedicate discussion time to, to item SLA number three. And then that would be the only thing in order for us to, to, to speak about until we're done speaking about it. Right. So that's a way, you know, if I, if I really wanted to influence you guys about that item, I might want you to, you know, really have a focused discussion. That's how I would accomplish it. You may also request a separate vote on it, but let's not do that very often. 
Okay, David, now that you have the mic. Okay, so yeah, I'm David Crane. I'm the chair of the Transportation, Public Safety, and Environment Committee. First, um, important for my committee members, um, a mea culpa here. I, we had, I've been telling you for over a month that there are going to be two meetings in June, and there are not anymore because, as Susan pointed out, the DOT is not going to be ready. MTA is not going to be ready for the that we had scheduled in the middle of June. Therefore, we're only having one meeting, and unfortunately, it's the very end of June. It'll be the Thursday after the full board meeting. That's where the DOT is, DOT is going to be presenting about um, you know, their updates about the situation on Grant and Clinton and the whole surrounding area at the lower half of the district. That's a very important meeting we've been wanting to have for a long time. We had to have it in a large location and we had to have all of the agencies agree to come, so we really can't move the meeting date. So we got, there's only one meeting, and it's June 26th. Uh, the other thing is, um, in Susan's report, the K-2, there's progress on K-2. I'll remind you that in January 2015, the board passed a resolution out of, out of our committee, out of my committee. We were requesting um, uh, penal code classifications for K-2 as a controlled substance for purposes of intent to sell and distribute. Explicitly, we have a lot of reasoning about not wanting it to be, um, become punishment for, for users, for small users, right? And this sounds like exactly what the Department of Health has done, so there's, uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm glad you passed my resolution three and a half years ago. Any questions about the agenda? Richard? Uh, or anything? The resolution is only the title and the body, not the, the, the first thing was how it appeared on the agenda. And then you'll see title and motion. And the title and motion refer to two locations. The third location, it's kind of like lost. We don't really know why we requested it. We don't know who requested it. If you want, I can give you details about that snafu. But I believe that the title and the motion itself refer to the two locations where we are asking for some jobs. Do you want to hear about the other one? Confusing. Well, it's always confusing, but the, 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 the agenda item isn't necessarily the title of the resolution. It never has been. Never will be. Often is, but you, often not. David. Uh, if you wanted to vote one, not the other, how do you know that this resolution should be separate? It's going to the same agency, and so it's the same exact situation, and they came to us in one bundle. Clause. I mean, we could have done it with two, you're right, but I don't, I don't think we've done any harm by passing it as one. There's a whereas clause for each location explained what we have. Well, actually, um, look at the map. There's one on the side, there's one here in the block apart, a regular here in the block, and uh, there's the lights on each of those corners. The one on the path there's the market, there's a very cool double there in the block, but there may be, makes sense. would like to argue for one and against the other. You could you could suggest a motion. You, you could amend. You could move to what the problem was what the foresight was? Do you want to come down and grab a mic? It's actually we're being you know broadcast. It's a speed it was a the speed bump? Yeah. Speed hump, yeah. So there are two locations and I actually can tell you that the both of these were requested by board members so Prick your ears up if you requested right. one of these. I looked at the, I, I mapped the situations. The one on Forsyth Street is one avenue block long. And on each corner, there's a light with a crosswalk. So by making the speed bump, you're sort of encouraging people to jaywalk, technically. There's no real, if we do that in every block we have, the, you know, we could you find most blocks, you could have a reason to do that. And on Catherine Street and, and Market, 
that's a double block. That's a double even a block where I can see the need to maybe you should put a light in the middle of that block or something or some separation there. That's all. Uh, um, this speed bump on Forsyth Street was requested by the Deaf Housing Community, which has a special consideration for that area. I'm not sure why it would produce jaywalking. Because if you have a crosswalk at the corner, so if the cross in the middle, you have a light and a crosswalk. Just as a technicality, a speed bump isn't a crossing, and there's no crossing yeah. marks it's on it. Slow down traffic. Correct. It, but you it's have a light. There's a speed hump may, directly outside may, of my may door. I, where I live. May I? May I? May uh, I? Uh, this was requested by people who live there, and they said cars speed down the street. DOT did a long study. It took years, and they agreed that it made sense. That part. The thing is, though, they live there. Every, you're gonna have a speed hump on almost. You're gonna have a speed hump on. You can have. There'll be many more blocks who want speed humps, even though they have a legal crossing space for a light. So the people are going to jaywalk. Okay, then. I'm not going to encourage an open debate right now because this is something that is already discussed in, in committee. Me? Right. I, I was just going to suggest that I think you're. Your understanding of a speed hump is incorrect. A speed hump is not um, a mid-section crosswalk. It is just a bump to slow cars down. So I don't understand how it could encourage jaywalking. Because the reason why people are crossing there is because they're jaywalking. Otherwise, you cross at the corner with the light. OK. Herman. Herman. And then Ms. Josephine. Stanton. Yes, for some reason, um, a lot of traffic doesn't want to go all the way down the Lancy Street, so they use Forsyth Street as a shortcut. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, there's a lot of times that even the seniors from the public housing is having difficulty crossing because there are people speeding along Forsyth Street. Um, and I remember when Harry Reader used to live there, he used to, he used to advocate for slowing down the traffic and forcing it. Actually, I think there is a, should be a second one between the school. The school he's a second one between Stanton and his house because they, although there's a light there going on Stanton, there is the playground that the children sometimes come across the street and also the special <laughs> So I think there should even be a second one. Okay, Ms. Johnson. Uh, my question is, um, I would like to know how we can get a speed bump put on Montgomery Street because we have a lot of traffic coming off of South Street, the FDR Drive, and they go flying from there all the way to Madison Street, even though we have a school right across the street we have a light, and they still eat the light, and they go flying. Yes. Yes. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to explain that process because it kind of goes to the heart of what happened. Why we only passed two of the three. It's not really okay. There's two parts to get a speed hump approved for installation, and there's a disconnect that's happened. I don't know in the last about five years. I'm not sure what caused that five years ago, but um, the DOT does an evaluation, so they need to get the request from a resident such as yourself, and it should describe what you said to us. DOT then does a technical evaluation, and they'll make sure it makes sense. For instance, they can't put it if there's a bus on that route, on that street, for instance. Um, and then they won't install it until community board approves it. This Connect is that we didn't hear about them directly from DOT. It wasn't until I don't know how Susan picked it up, but the process must be fixed. Yeah, but it was they collected over a period of three years. So you were going to try to you know, get that process sped up. But the, the thing is, the request goes to 
DOT. I'm not really sure how to get that started. Maybe it's. You can call 311 and it'll go to DOT, but I would actually suggest that um, you can also send it to the community board and we can check if there's no uh, reason criteria like David mentioned that it can't be, we could vote on it at, uh, and send it to DOT. Oh. Which is similar to the old process. Which okay, so are we, clear? are we clear? Okay. Okay. All right, for the sake of time, I just want to make sure that we're very clear on how to get a speed bump on your block. All right. Parks and Recreation. I'm sorry, David, is that all for your report? Unless there are questions on the current agenda items. Okay. Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Can I have a mic for Took it away. I'm going to try and be quick. I know it's late. So we had two votes. One of them was for uh, Joseph Sauer Playground. They came, uh, Parks came to us with a design. We approved uh, the design with some conditions. Uh, the other one was for the new park at Pier 42. Uh, for the new members who are not aware, this has been a number one priority on our uh, district needs for quite, I don't know how many years we've had it as a number one priority for district needs, but it's been a priority for this community to have a brand new park along the waterfront. Uh, our approval was for the comfort station because they are adding a, uh, a comfort station which will add to uh, park staff and uh, uh, a bathroom facility along with a playground that has water. So it's just the beginning of Pier 42 Park, but uh, we anticipate that over the years it will become a world-class uh, waterfront park. We also discussed Pier 36. Uh, Pier 36 is the uh, pier which Basketball City and other government agencies sit on. There are problems with pilings. Apparently, marine borers are eating away at the piles, and it's causing uh, some issues with the ability to use the pier. Uh, hopefully, they will, uh, the city will come back to us and let us know about uh, how the repairs are going to take place. Um, the, I'm going to mention the East Side Coastal Resiliency Project because uh, it has delayed. We were supposed to have an accelerated uh, schedule for the flood protection plan, which goes from Montgomery Street up to about 23rd Street. It has been delayed. We don't have any other further information, but we won't have to uh, experience the pleasure of trying to vote on ULERP and EAS uh, during the summer at the same time. Um, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. <coughs> Landmarks. Is it me? No. Okay, thank you. Uh, land use? That's right. Okay, thank you. Health, seniors, and human services. Um, I do not have anything to report on this month. We don't have any items for you to vote on, although we do a lot of work. Um, so are there any other are there any questions? Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, now we have Lisa for the bylaws committee. <laughs> um, as I reported last month, if anyone remembers, the bylaws committee has been meeting over the past few months uh, to review our current bylaws in detail. Um, and we have now prepared a recommendation, which Alicia mentioned before, Copies of it are here, and they're also um, posted, I am told already, if not by tomorrow morning, on the CB3 website. The plan of action is that we would vote on these changes uh, at next month's meeting. The version that you see here is the complete version as we're recommending it clean. There is a much more complicated to read version with track changes that's posted on the website. So you can see what actually changed since the last one. It's just hard to read, so we decided this one was better to read about today. If anybody's desperate to see that version uh, in hard copy, we have a couple here, but you will be able to see it here uh, on the board uh, uh, website. Um, it, it, to be honest, we met like three times.
times, I guess. And what we did basically was tinker. Um, there are a few major changes. We tried to make it clearer and, and more direct and, and put in uh, a couple really worthy changes. The, the biggest one, as I mentioned last month, is the timing of our election of officers. So um, the, uh, what we're proposing to do is change the current cycle of, of setting up the nominating committee, reporting out of the nominating committee, and having the vote from this spring time when new board members come on and they say, who the hell are those people that are just uh, uh, recommended as officers, and moving it back several months so that you'd have a, ta a chance to get to know who's who and what's what. So instead of being a March through um, June cycle, it would start in September and the vote would actually happen in November. That's the biggest change. Um, there are a couple other things. We put in a, a session on how the U, a ULERP vote, soon you'll learn about what I'm talking about when I say ULERP, so that'll be useful. Um, ULERP votes are, are uh, probably our most direct governmental intervention. It's the part of the city charter that, that you know, it says community boards most, must vote. And we handle those votes a little differently. So in its it, it, recent past, it became a little confusing about who gets to vote in a ULERP and how the votes are handled. So we, we put in a section to clarify that. There are a couple other little, um, you know, uh, um, uh, tweaks, but I, I don't think anything else is really major enough to mention here. But I do encourage you to look at the version uh, that's online with the tracks it changes so you can see what's what. Um, but that's basically what we did for the past three months. So uh, it, also, if you have any questions and you want to email me about them, I'd be glad to answer them after you have a chance to read it. Thank you, Lisa. Essex Crossing Task Force. Dominic? No, I remember nope. it last time. Oh, yeah. We haven't met since then. Okay, thank you. Lower Manhattan, if Nancy's not here. Okay, old business. Any old business? Oh, yeah, that's right. I did that again. I did that again. I'm sorry. We have to vote. Let's do that. Thank you. Roll call vote. Don't leave the room. <laughs> so it's, it's clear to everybody that this is on the, all items on those three committee agendas. It's one vote. And you may divide your vote. <clears throat> David Adams? Yes. Transportation what? Three. three. Your own Alden? Jesse Beck? Yes. Don Inver? Yes. Lee Berman? Yes, except no on SLA items 10 and 22. <coughs> Victoria Berry? Karen Black. Karen? Lisa Burris? Yes, except the state of state or more SLA items will be necessary. Carlo Chin? Yes. 
Jonathan Chu. Yes. Mi Fong Chan. David Crane. Yes. Jaime Daniels. Yes. Paul DeRenza. Eric Diaz. Yes. Daniel Gibson. Yes. Dean Johnson. Yes. Alistair Cornelius. Yes. Sean Fennessy. Yes. David Ford. Yes. Ryan Hill. Yes. Deborah Glass. Yes. Herman Newman. Yes. Trevor Hollis. Yes. Linda Jones. Yes. Valentina Jones. Yes. Marty and Joyce. The vote. Sorry, he has to announce the vote. Sorry. Thank you. So everything passed. Everything passed. Thank you, everyone. Um, meeting to motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Good night, everyone. Travel safely home.